Uh, just lift your tripod, dude. I'm part of the Southeast Ottawa. Get off your butt, lift your tripod. I'm not telling you. And as a member of Southeast Ottawa, we have this question. If elected, what action are you planning to take to support refugee health care and persuade the federal government to stop cuts to refugee health care? Thank you. Did you question any specific candidate? And no, to open to all candidates. Let's start across the table, starting with Mr. Young and just going down the table, please. One, one minute for the answers, please. How society treats those in need is a critical, critical measure of how, they, how, how mature that society is. We welcome people to our country on a regular basis, hundreds of thousands every year, who are coming to Canada to seek a better life. It's absolutely critical that people don't show up on our shores and then die in our arms. A government without compassion is a government worth nothing. We will be compassionate. We will advocate on behalf of health care for everyone who arrives here. We will not advocate for health care greater than that already available to the citizens. We will not be advocating any services not already available to people living here simply because you've just arrived. We will ensure that you have every opportunity to be successful and be healthy. You will be the same as everyone because you are the same as everyone. Thank you. of needy people. Needy people who we could get paychecks and put to work burying nuclear, and needy people who are too sick to work. So let's presume by the end of the q and I've explained where we're going to get the money to put the people who could be working back to work burying nuclear. And let's just deal with the people who can't. Well, Isaiah 55, you who are hungry and have no money, come buy and eat. So give them an interest free loan. Let them buy and eat. You who have no clothes and are cold, come, buy some clothes, be warm. Give them an interest free loan. Let them have some clothes. And if the guys who die in the negative, we divvy it over the database. And a few who die in the positive, potlatch. But the rest of us who die in the potlatch, that's big contributions to a generally rich society. So, with the technology we have, we should be doing better than our grandparents who could afford to have a house and six kids. And this generation never will. How come? Thank you, Mr. Trudell. Ms. Cucicello. Thank you. The federal conservative government has cut access for refugee families to the health care system. And what we're finding is that a lot of this is now being downloaded and felt at our hospitals. Our refugee families need to have access to health care and I will fight and, uh, and advocate to ensure that all residents, all people living in this riding have access to the quality health care that they need. We know that there are ongoing concerns. The Liberal government has also made cuts to health care and access to health care is an issue that I think is something that I'm hearing from a lot of you on the doorstep and we need to change our priorities, do some strategic investments in a way to make sure that there are no barriers to health care. Thank you, Mr. Michel. Mr. Maduro. I have a rather different answer from most of the other candidates I expect. Uh, the Freedom Party would be all in favor of immigration. Uh, we would believe in the most open society possible. However, when we admit someone to our society through the physical border, it doesn't create an automatic obligation on the existing members of society. Someone who walks into my house doesn't own my kitchen and doesn't have a claim to what's in my fridge. In a free society, there are massive opportunities, unlimited opportunities for charity, for volunteer work, and for support of immigrants or any other cause that someone wants to undertake. Where it goes astray is when the force of government is used against the people who exist in the society for the benefit of those who are just entering the society. Love immigrants, hate the entire policy. Thank you, Mr. Group. Mr. Fraser. I believe that if we're welcoming people to our country who are escaping violence, threats of violence, war, like we have been for probably the better part of 100 years, I think we'll invite them here and welcome them here. We have to treat them as if they're our own. I think the federal conservative cuts to refugee health care is nothing short of reprehensible. 
That's not the kind of society that we live in. I oppose them. I'll continue to oppose them and support our Minister of Health as she has very strongly opposed them. Thank you very much. Um, I guess you go back to the first colonists that came to this uh, continent. They're all refugees, they're all immigrants, and we're all their descendants. Uh, go back to that policy. He who comes here, he or she who comes here is to make a better life for themselves. From that moment on, the government should just, the minute you arrive, you should be able to apply your skills at work instead of being put aside in, in storage until they find a place for you. But the best ones to find a place for themselves is themselves. The individual will find what they can do best in this country if they're allowed to do it. So I would free, uh, well, not I, but the, uh, the idea is you would be free to choose where you want to work, how you want to work right away when you're right. Thank you, Mr. Pistone. Mr. Post. I believe that immigrants uh, should have access to health care and uh, should be treated equally as long as they're legal immigrants, landed immigrants to the country, and uh, everything has been put forth in a proper fashion, that no one should be denied access to health care. Thank you, Mr. Post. Ms. Howard. Well, the maintenance of uh, our health care uh, policy is to have community-based health care centers, so no member of the community would be left out in that case. So that would be across the board, whether you're a refugee, whether you're a senior, whether you're a young person, whether you're an adult. It's a community approach because we like local things. Thank you, Ms. Harris. Mr. Reddings. And should be open to the refugees. Thank you. Thank you all.